our intern population over any given year is another about 1,100. Wow. Most of which come in the summer, about 700 are here in the summer. Would you say that most of the interns are <laughs> But basically, we are pulling data into antenna at Goldstone, California, Canberra, Australia, and Madrid, Spain. So you can see Madrid 63, that's one of our antenna. Mm -hmm. So anytime you can get more mileage out of a vehicle or a spacecraft, I mean, that's just like value added because a lot of these things are developed with the intention of lasting just, you know, maybe a couple of years. But the more they keep going, the more information we can continue to pull. And so that's why Voyager is really special because, I mean, 37 years, that's longer than a lot of people have been alive. So, <laughs> you know, but it keeps it's going, keeps on going and kicking. Um, Cassini, which does a lot of the study of Saturn, um, it's coming to the end. And so basically what it's going to do, and if you look, I'll kind of explain to you. I was going to talk about this, so. We are very uh, committed to a team culture here at JPL in which everybody has an equally important role in the mission. So whenever there's something like a launch, everybody wears the same color. Um, nobody's more dressed up or down than the others because everybody's important to it. So you saw them all in that room um, and you know, history was made. While they were in that room doing their important jobs, there were governors in here, there were NASA, heavyweights in here, there were people from federal government, um, there were a couple of celebrities in here, I'm told. <laughs> um, so this room has had a lot of different people sit in its seats um, throughout the years. We even have a lot of people come um, to visit JPL who you might think has nothing to do with it, but for example, Halle Berry was going to be making a movie where there was a portion of the movie that had to do with space exploration. So they brought her on a tour here so she can kind of get some information. And so they brought her all through here and explained everything to her. And she was here for the whole day for 44 hours and the next week for 36 hours. And then we'll have the Friday off. Oh, that's cool. Mm -hmm. So that's another reason why it's hard to schedule tours and stuff because a lot of groups want to come on Fridays and I'm like, well, I don't work that Friday. <laughs> I know the Friday they come, things like that. So most of us are on that schedule. Um, for interns, you know, their schedule, if they're working during the school year, um, we usually don't want them working more than 10 to 15 hours per week on lab because of classes. But there's a lot of them. And sometimes they'll just be sitting like right here. Yeah. <laughs> so we have a lot of outdoor seating. Not only do we have 5,000 people who need to eat meals, but 
We like to meet outside a lot. I know my team that I'm on, the higher education group, we don't like to meet indoors. We're indoors a lot. So we try to come out here. And the meetings. weather here is beautiful. It is. So whenever we can, we get out. When you work in a place where creativity is such a cornerstone, you really need to be able to, you know, get out and think. <laughs> so this area out here is known as the mall. Um, it's really nice. It gets really crowded during the day, um, and all do all during the day because some people even bring their laptops as you can see and work out here. We have a lot of events that we put on in this area. We have an international festival um, every year where we celebrate every year. So we have dancers, singers, performers, and then food. So from every country represented by JCL. So it's a lot of fun. We do that. Um, we facility <clears throat> and like I said sometimes they are actually actively working on something and they are but <laughs> just at the computer so this is a clean room facility and I have the stats on that so it's currently set up as a class 100,000 room which means per cubic foot there are 100,000 or fewer dust particles. And why is that important? <laughs> or it has to be clean. Station to a telescope in Wrightwood, California. So we have a number of projects like that where, you know, it is our early career hires or young hires um, that we, you know, entrust to use their creativity, their expertise to get something out there, you know, that's really gonna contribute. Now they used to have in this room, and I don't see where it is. They move it all the time. I don't know it's gone. Well, that's the whole time I've been here, but <laughs> that this is like one of the last things they launch. As soon as the mouse moves. Supervisor of the group. 
so most of our interns will be working under Division 32. Collision course with a rope has cut the bridle immediately and fly to the same stage to a safe distance from the road.
what is out there? How did it all come to be? And the most fundamental of all questions, is there life elsewhere? Or are we alone? Answering these questions requires a journey to the planets and beyond. That was 1936. By the 50s, we were building rockets like these. Then, in 1958, in answer to the Soviet Sputnik, JPO built and helped launch the first U.S. satellite, Explorer 1. Since that time, JPL has been our nation's premier center for the robotic exploration of our solar system. We also operate the Deep Space Network, the vital communications link that allows us to send commands to, and receive data from, an armada of spacecraft. Not a day goes by that JPL isn't involved in some new discovery, and we share that information with the public and our schools. It's a privilege to conduct space exploration on behalf of our nation. We hope you come away understanding how the passion of our employees and their spirit of exploration motivates everything we do. We thank you for coming and we hope you enjoy your stay.